Welcome to the 320 Podcast, where we encourage you to reach for the immeasurably more life with Christ. From discussions on scripture, to poetic messages, to dreaming big with Jesus, you will enjoy a variety of episodes brought to you by Shelley Wilson Ministries. To find out more about Shelley Wilson Ministries and the many resources available to you, please visit our website at www.shellywilsonministries.org. Well, Nancy. Yes, Miss Shelley. We're going to turn the tables. I know. <laughs> a sweet one had messaged me and said, you know, I really, she had listened to the Word of the Heart Heals and Dream Big Things, and she said, I really want to hear your story. Yeah. And I mean, I could sit at the microphone and just tell it, mm-hmm. but that just doesn't seem to be as fun. Yeah. You I know, agree. or maybe I wouldn't, um, I don't know, answer some questions people have. Yeah. Right. right. So that's when I met, I messaged you guys and why don't y'all interview me? Mm-hmm. So we'll turn the tables. Mm-hmm. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds good to me. And, and for those who don't know, Nancy Ludlam has been with me for years in one form yeah. or fashion and um, shine creatively, mm-hmm. which people see, see often on Facebook. So um, ministry is normal for you. Yes. Um, and you've known me well enough now to know what to ask. Yes. <laughs> I think I do. Right. Yes. So, okay. Where do you want to start? Where do you think people would want to start? Well, I know that I've learned a lot about you uh, personally mm-hmm. from just being in support groups and working with the Dream Big support right. group, especially. Right. And that's where I first met you about four years ago. Yeah. And I know little times when when you do share in our groups, which has helped me immensely when I understand that you as our, I consider as my leader and my mm-hmm. pastor, I consider you as that as mm-hmm. well. And you share tidbits about your struggles mm-hmm. that just makes you, I don't know what I want to say the word endeared to me, I guess, because then I, I can see that you understand right. totally where I'm coming from. So I guess maybe my thought is to go back and do a little reminiscing. I know that you have, have been married for several years. You have two children. Yep. Maybe we start there. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm married. My husband and I were high school sweethearts. So I've been married since 18. Mm. And I do have two kids, both of which are grown, and now I'm a grandmother. Yay! Of two. So it's, uh, you know, it's interesting in my mind. It's, it's you know, it feels, it feels like yesterday. Yes. I was in hell. Oh, I know. <laughs> and, you know, or, or even yesterday, I'm just realizing I, I didn't know the Lord. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I would have said I knew the Lord all my high school days and I would have called myself a Christian. And at 30, mm-hmm. I hit a brick wall and just all sign of reality. I, I had just had my son, he was four months old. And Whatever happened, who knows? Of not going to be spiritual, mm-hmm. um, and so had him sent me into some sort of whether it, some people might say hormonal postpartum or whatever, yeah. but um, it led me to Jesus. Yeah, and I realized at thirty, I was I was not really saved. Mm-hmm. You know, I was kind of just who I was expected to be. You know, who my mama was, or mm-hmm. who you ought to be, right? And how many of us do yeah. that exact thing, especially if we've been raised in the church, right. which I understand how that goes because I was too. And I mean, we were expected to do things, say things. And I know right. the verbiage Christianese, exactly. you know, where well, somebody that doesn't understand what that means, it is where we say all the right things that are <laughs> godly and church lingo i guess is the word i want to say and we can make it really look good exactly. and sound good but where are we really yeah. Yeah. yeah so can you share a little bit about how the holy spirit worked with you mm-hmm. to get you to that point were there oh, yeah. some key things in your life besides the depression and um i mean yeah listen when you're desperate you'll do whatever and um mm-hmm. you know we were going to doctor after doctor to try to figure out what was going on with me. Mm-hmm. You know, no one had any answers. Right. Um, and they would put me on one antidepressant after another. It would make me worse. Mm-hmm. Um, 
one sent me into insomnia for three weeks, oh. which made me delirious. Yes. <clears throat> Yet God was working in all of that because I was having nightmares every night about the devil standing at the end of my bed. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't very you know, committed to church growing up. I mean, my mother drug us, made us get up, and <laughs> at least the days that I didn't pretend to be asleep, you know, in all honesty, which she knew. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I can't tell you that I, I must have picked up enough that when the nightmare started, I knew to say the Lord's Prayer, my Father who art in heaven, I mean, I, until I could fall asleep. And I would constantly try to say the name of Jesus. Sometimes I was paralyzed and I couldn't say it in the nightmares. Um, and I, I, re- I definitely remember being on my stomach and afraid to turn over and see what was in my room. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, you know, the Holy Spirit was already bringing things to my remembrance that I didn't even know I knew. Yeah. Really. That's those seeds that are planted. Right. We didn't even realize. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, you know, as we went doctor to doctor, I remember showing up at a doctor's office, hair disheveled, no makeup. Yeah. I was crying, saying, I need, I've got to see somebody, Mm -hmm. you know. And um, at this point, I just, you know, sleep so important. I wasn't getting that. Right. Um, I, I remember we were at a revival at the church I was going to. The Lord, I felt that at that revival, the Lord speak to me for the first, you know, um, about using your gifts for the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'd always wanted to be a singer since I was a little girl. Barbara Mandrell was my hero and I wanted to be her and I'd sing in my Coke bottle in my bedroom every time her show was on TV. And that was like a big dream. Yeah. And, And I drug my husband to every kind of dive you can think of. In our early days of marriage, before the kids, and even after Allison mm-hmm. was born. But um, I started, I guess, after kind of hearing the Lord speak or, or feeling like the Lord was trying to talk to me, I would go to the Assembly of God in, in White House down the street, a Methodist church. All the messages were the same during that time. It was about using the gifts for the Lord. Mm, so the Lord was preparing you. Yeah. It didn't matter where I went or where I ran. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think I was com- becoming awakened to his voice. And then I remember distinctly being in a, a hot bath. And, you know, I wasn't where I would hurt myself, but I didn't want to live. Right. So I was asking the Lord, to, would he just take me? Mm-hmm. Um. And in that moment, I, I, I knew that I knew that I knew Nancy, that I was not his. Yeah. So <clears throat> what do you feel like was one of your first lessons that the Holy Spirit taught you after you rededicated your life to the Lord? Was it? Well, I, def- I, de- I think, first of all, I heard the voice of God for, for the first time. Right. Right. I mean, I had always heard about God. Mm-hmm. But as far as him speaking to me, that was my first experience, whether it was on that bathroom floor um, or at all the different churches. Mm -hmm. It's not like I was hearing God say, hi, this is God. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Because people ask me stuff like that all the time. What do you mean you hear from God? Right. And um, he was speaking through people is all I can say. Mm -hmm. And it was so directly to me. Right. That like I could sermon. not, yes, I yeah. could not deny it. Exactly. And yeah. I know that you've shared it. Every church you went to, it was like, it was the same subject matter of what God was trying to get across to you. And Yeah, it yeah. was the, it didn't matter what church I went to. It didn't matter what denomination I went to. Because it was all spectrums, Baptist, Methodist, Assembly of God. The message was the same. Mm-hmm. You know, even in the church revival the same. Yeah. So you knew without a shadow of a doubt. He was chasing me down. Yes, exactly. So, so what do you feel like you learned in that first year after? Well, I mean, I so so many things. I was scared to death to pray out loud. You know, and I tell this story so often. 
uh, my Betty McEver was there, part of the prayer group that we had, and um, helped mentor me through that first year. And I'll never forget, because we, we gathered weekly mm-hmm. in a mutual, uh, one of the prayer partners' homes, and we would always pray at the end. Well, I never would pray out loud, because, you know, that just made me nervous and anxious. And I remember her being on, on the phone with me, and she said, now the next thing we're going to work on is, is you praying out loud. Mm-hmm. And I remember like, hanging <laughs> up and saying, no, we are not. God can hear me in my head when I'm praying, and I am not. She didn't even know this for years. I did not confess <laughs> it for years. I was absolutely not going to do that. Yeah. I didn't care what she said. It, it terrified me too much. Yeah. Um, Except that soon after, we're all gathered around the coffee table in that house, and my palms start sweating, and my chest is, my heart is beating out of my chest, and I knew (laughs) that the Holy Spirit was saying, you are about to pray out loud. Mm -hmm. And I I won't, I'll never forget, because I, I and I know this is a problem with a lot of people, so that's why I share this all the time. Sure. Right? Like, who knew I was going to be where I am today? Right. Um, But I also see, look at what the devil was trying to stop. Oh, absolutely. You know, and so I remember praying. My voice was so shaky. My hands were shaking. My palms were sweaty. And I don't even remember what I prayed. It was probably just a very simple whatever was on my heart. Yeah. And that... That started my ability to, that fear was now gone. Yeah. It was like God that first year was removing so many fears. Yes, yes. Because you don't know how much bondage you're in until you're out of it. Amen to that. Like, yeah. you would think, what's the big deal? Why does somebody need to pray out loud? Well, the power of life and death is in my tongue. Yes. I know that today, mm-hmm. and you've seen in our rooms right. the times that I have to deliver people of demonic strongholds mm-hmm. where I have to pray out loud, right? Exactly. Oh, that devil knew. Sure he did. He knew, he knew who I was before Shelly knew mm-hmm. who she was. Yeah. So between the fears and all of a sudden, and I remember sitting on my couch one night reading the Bible. I had King James back then. It's all I had, a little... I still have that Bible. Um, And I remember opening it up and reading it and saying out loud, oh my gosh, I actually understand this. Well, today I know why, because the Holy Spirit actually was living in me now. Exactly. And he's, you know, it was the word coming to life. Right. Right. What we quote all the time, when the Spirit lives in you, he's the revealer of truth. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand the Bible prior to the, the one who reveals truth living in me. Right. That's why we can't expect unbelievers to to understand everything yeah. because they don't have the revelator <laughs> right. yet. And it makes a huge difference. And that's really the only way that we can understand how the Word comes alive. Oh and it, you may read a passage 42 times yep. and come back the 43rd time and it just jumps off the page. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a never-ending Word. And I can have one scripture that I've memorized uh Uh, For example, Ephesians 3.20, y'all knows my life first. Mm -hmm. He will do immeasurably more than you can think or imagine according to the power that's in us. Well, I think I lived out the first part of that scripture for years, forgetting according to the power that lives in us. It wasn't until later God had to teach me what that meant. So see, we're always drawing more out of the word based on where we're at. He gives us what we need when it's time right if that makes sense yeah sure does and i know that in our groups and in each one of those rooms you do not expect for us to have arrived you are always telling us it's a journey and that's Mm -hmm. something that we all need to understand well i'm i haven't arrived right right i mean I think we have an expectation that we are going to arrive. Right. But we don't arrive until we go home. Exactly. So. Okay. Well, you already shared what your life verse was. Mm -hmm. 
And when did you know that God had called you into ministry? I mean, I understand mm -hmm. that each one of us as Christians have a form of ministry. Right. But not to the, the level to where you are at mm -hmm. right now. Like what? Full-time? Right. Submerged daily. Exactly. <laughs> well, again, we all have that. Right. But it looks different. Right. Right, for each one mm -hmm. of us. Um, you know, for years I was in a business world. I worked for a company called Berkeley Heart Lab. Um, my background is a uh, healthcare. I, had a I have an MBA in healthcare services. And the Lord, um, I worked at Mother Francis for years, was part of a layoff that opened a door to, to work for a company out of California. So I'm working for the company when all my conversion takes place. And so they saw me prior to, and they saw me after, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was still in that world for a long time and singing on the weekends. Um, I can't remember how many years, Nancy, it was. But I think there came a day when I just was restless. I was tired of both. Right. Um, and although God had used me a lot in that company, I mean, we'd travel to Chicago and be meeting with the doctor's office. And I remember being with a girl that I worked with. And we're in the doctor's office, and all of a sudden, I just ask a personal question that I shouldn't have known to ask. And it led to a talk about the Lord, not about what I was selling. And I remember walking back to the car, and my girlfriend, who was also a believer, said to me, how did you know to ask that? And I said, I have no idea, but the Holy Spirit yeah. told me. Um, you know, he, that company was full of um, few believers because it, in that area it was owned by Jewish men who were like grandfathers to me who somehow supported my first album when I released it yet not being of the same faith mm -hmm. really that I was but they loved me and I loved them and God would put me in these powerhouse meetings with Buddhists and atheists and um, Jewish people and I would I was so green still, and, and the Lord would make me share the gospel, and I was like, I don't even, like, can't you give me something easy, Lord? Like, you know, so I was already in ministry, right? Mm -hmm. But one day, I just was tired. I, I, want, I just wanted, I just felt like there was more for me, right. and I remember saying, Lord, if you want me to resign my job, then I need you to use the word resign. Mm. And I don't have a clue if it was the same day or the day after or whatever, but I turned on the radio and Charles Stanley was preaching. And he said, some of you, God may say, resign your job. <laughs> and that was your answer. That was my answer. And mm -hmm. I called my husband and I said, I think God wants me to resign my job. And he said, okay. I don't think he realized, nor did I, what that was going to mean. Right. You know, that was all my insurance benefits. That was a 401k. That was um, stock in the company. Mm -hmm. I was one of two women at the time in the director role. God had given me favor. I had no business being in that role. I didn't have the skill for it, but the but I had favor. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, my CEO called me and pleaded with me to stay, and I said, listen... God has called me on, mm -hmm. and and um, to this day, I don't know that he's a believer. I pray for him often. Um, you know, he would have such influence in the kingdom because, oh, yeah. because of where he's been and what he knows and his intellect, even, in his heart. Um, and then he puts me on the conference call to explain mm -hmm. to the whole leadership team, Shelly, tell them what you told me why I have tried everything to keep you and in front of again unbelievers you were able to share the gospel I said listen when God calls you oh it makes me emotional yeah. 
because I left them with the truth. Yes. And but I still had to go. Yes. You know? And you knew it was time. I knew it was time. Yeah. And again, I didn't know that I was about to step off into a brand new war. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they paid my cell phone bill. They paid every expense in business I have. And now all of a sudden, I'm, it's just me and the Lord. Yeah. And with no, no idea of how that was going to work out. If somebody was dealing talking to the Lord, I guess, or he, he was talking to them about resigning their position mm-hmm. and stepping off into what they felt called to do, what would you tell them? You better do it. Okay. I Listen, you know, surround yourself with wise counsel, especially when you're unsure, but, but when in that moment I knew that I knew that I knew. Right. That's all I, I it's hard to explain. Right, like you just know. It's a heart knowledge. It's it's a knowing, yeah. like no doubt. If I had, and, and I was sharing uh, with somebody when you came in earlier, what God ended up doing after that is pretty amazing because they came back to me and said, will you consider being a consultant? And with just so many hours a week, I ended up making more money with fewer hours and I was I had the whole cake and eat it too that's awesome and um, that lasted for a while Mm -hmm. and so I felt like that was God almost rewarding my faith rewarding my obedience like help tell you what Shelly since you had the courage to do it I'm gonna give it all back to you and then some and so I was able to just almost have it on my own terms Mm -hmm. You know, but still have more time for the work of ministry outside of that company. Right. Um, I don't, any delayed obedience is disobedience. I've certainly done that plenty in my walk, and I have found that I make a mess of things when I do that. Right. You know, just like taking the reins and trying to run it yourself, <laughs> trying no. to control it all. Exactly. Trying to make it all make sense. Right. And, you know, boy, our head gets involved in our mm. intellect and even our theology. Oh, absolutely. And ruins it because what looks crazy to man is, is not usually biblical because yeah. Abraham was told to go to a place, leave your family, your father's place, and go to a place mm-hmm. I'll tell you when we get there. Yeah. He had no idea who was, where he was going. Yeah. Who would who wants to do that today? Right. Who does that today? Nobody. I, and <laughs> I think few. he's looking for those kind of people sure. today. Yeah. Of who will really trust me mm-hmm. with their future? You know, it's faith who, that unlocks it, God's <laughs> blessings. That's for sure. Yes. So let's let's kind of shift gears a little bit, and I want you to talk about your songwriting Mm -hmm. and your poetry Mm -hmm. and short stories and different things that God has given you okay and how those come to you okay okay well I mean I remember first starting blogging Mm -hmm. just what I felt about the Lord I remember I didn't know what was happening I remember people telling me I think God's going to do something with your writing and I didn't really think much about it. It, I was just pouring out what was in me, Mm -hmm. like adoration, things he would do for me, little stories, God stories, God winks, whatever you want to call them. Sure. Um, From a songwriting perspective, you know, my first album had no songs I'd written. I was not a songwriter when I started. I had a friend that I traveled with. She wrote music, and... I wanted that, and but I, I don't play music, I don't read music, I'm not a good choir person, because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> and I was praying one day, and the Lord said, you receive not because you ask not, mm. and I said, well, okay, then if that's the case, Lord, I'm asking you to make me a songwriter, and I woke up. I remember 3 or 3.30 in the morning, 4 maybe, with lyrics rolling in my head. And the, the first uh, 
song on that album on my next album that I released a few years later was the dance mm. and I didn't know how to structure a song all I knew is to keep writing what until I till it quit coming so that was the beginning of him training me how to hear him write a song mm -hmm. see it's different with me I don't sit down to write a song I hear when he writes a song right and that doesn't make the way other people do it wrong it makes it different right so he does it somebody may have the skill to play a guitar or keyboard so he'll sit them down at a keyboard and give them notes and melodies today I hear them in my head and I just start singing them into my phone that's amazing that's how it starts so you know that's part of my story of the immeasurably more life verses songwriting is an immeasurably more for mm. me uh, poetry didn't come till years later I Really? I mean, maybe I wrote a few short poems. I can't remember along the way, but, and y'all know this well. Ten years ago, I ended up in a deep, deep, dark valley. Again, another valley. FYI, there are many valleys to the walk with Jesus. Amen. <laughs> There's not just one. Yeah. And all of a sudden, poetry started pouring out of me. I'd get four or five a day. I could barely, I'd have three in my head at once. Wow. Um, it's not always that way now, mm -hmm. but it was like the activation of that gift happened. Mm -hmm. It was through pain. It was God tapping into every emotion I had. I realized at that point I had a, a seer gifting, a seer prophetic, seer prophetic people are emotional people. Explains a lot yeah. about me. Yeah. So I have to feel every poem. Mm. I, I can't write what I don't understand in some ways. Uh, and maybe that's the wrong word. I can't write what I don't feel. Understood, yeah. Because I can still feel it and not understand it. Sure. That's probably a better wording, phrasing. Mm -hmm. um, at first, it all started coming with the sound of King James language. So I knew it wasn't Shelley making it up. Right. Right. And sometimes I still get those that have that bent, and I'm like, wow, Lord. <laughs> like, my, everybody here in this podcast knows I have a southern twang. <laughs> so for me to write something like that, you know, it has to be a holy thing. Right. Yet he'll still give me such a practical word, right? Mm. Straighten up your crown. Yeah. Or a poem that speaks life into a heart. They just don't know how to articulate what they're feeling mm -hmm. um, I put vocals on a song yesterday morning uh, which y'all heard one night I sang acapella yes it was beautiful I've been wondering that song and it's such a valley song but I I guess God gives me sometimes what helps other people say what they can't that's true yeah. You know, and so sometimes it's so simple, but it's raw and it's mm, real, real. It's where you really are, because y'all know, I believe God deals with truth. Amen. Yeah. And it's not just the truth of the scriptures, but the truth of where I really am mm -hmm. in life. Am I in pain? Am I in trauma? Am I struggling? Am I angry? Mm -hmm. Am I depressed? Am I anxious? And all of those allow me to process mm -hmm. you know so all of those products poetry and music is a product of my relationship with him so it has it has to come through m him and me first before it's any good for you guys right you know and <clears throat> I know one of the things that you reiterate over and over to the ladies in our groups mm -hmm. is that you have to feel the pain yeah. of whatever you are going through to be able to get on the other side. And I think that as a creative person, that that is the same thing, mm -hmm. that he uses your creativity to work through that pain. Of course. And then that, in result, ministers to others. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well... If we don't, you have to feel it to heal it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's perfect. I can't even take uh, 
credit for that because I think I heard that on from somebody else's podcast, mm-hmm. and I was like, that is a good word. Yes. Because I think the acute trauma of whatever it is is only the tip of the iceberg mm-hmm. because God is usually working in that to uncover what's already been there. Mm-hmm. We've all seen that in group. For me, fear was already there, and he knew it. Mm-hmm. So he was going to come after that because he doesn't want me being afraid of anything. Right. He has not given me a spirit of fear, no. but one of love, power, and a sound mind. Exactly. That's another thing. I did not have a sound mind for a year, so I was in and out of dreams. Well, I had to come to a place to where I understood that I had a right to a sound mind. Yes. Yet I also had to know there was a, a reality there that I was not of a sound mind Mm -hmm. for a year you know yet how is it that in the middle of absolute insanity God God is the first thing I hear right you know if I didn't I mean you guys y'all heard me say this a thousand times you wouldn't even be here if not for those moments in my life right right number one I wouldn't have a thing to say to you well, and the thing is, when we have gone through such turmoil and such hardship, knowing that we're not alone, right? that God is there, but he also provides someone that can give you wisdom, yes, love on you, encourage you, right? because we all need it, and sometimes right. we need it more than others. So what do you see for the future for your ministry that you feel you can share? Well, it's so hard to know anymore. I I mean, he clearly lets me keep releasing music. Um, You know, I've recently made a shift in that, and I'll share that because it's kind of new for me. Uh, No one buys CDs anymore. Right. I shouldn't say no one. Some people still do few people still do the industry has kind of forced music people into a corner I mean um, I give my stuff away right through the love letter ministry here I know that the music everything I have is a tool so the music has been a tool so the Lord has shifted my way of thinking so now I have download cards and it's called seasons a song for every season. Oh, I love that. So instead of me releasing albums that are just kind of, you know, one song after another, I'm releasing seasonal music, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so someone will be able to go and get a card, or they'll get one here for free, and it'll. If you're in a hard place, then these are the songs that are going to minister to you in that season. If it's uh-huh. a winter season. Then I have Hush Little Baby. I have yeah. the new song. That's perfect. I've been wondering, you see what I'm saying? It's a, it's a shift where we start to understand that instead of a product to buy or mm-hmm. a product to purchase, yeah. it's a song that ministers to people. Right. So it's, a, it's adjusting the even the Christian industry mindset that this is not, we have commercialized the gospel way too much. Oh, I agree with that. And um, I'm not opposed, obviously, to selling music. I have a lot of friends who do, and mine are for sale on the website. I just know what he's called me to do is to be a giver, Mm -hmm. and everything goes in bags here to be given away. And that was the way I could do it in a way that, you know, if you're Apple streaming music, guess what? I can't give you Apple streaming for free. I don't have control of that. So that's something God's shifting in me. How do I use the tools in my tool belt. That's an analogy I have to keep going back to. Uh, my writings, they're now in a newspaper, The Sparrow. Mm-hmm. I give those away for free, quarterly free newspapers, because my I know that everything he gives me is to minister to somebody. So in dreams, I started to have dreams of newspapers. <laughs> that's I, I try not to birth anything that he's not birthing because right. that's why it's hard to answer that question because you've been here long enough to know, Nancy. I never know right. exactly what's coming. You're in a we're, we're 
recording today, checking a new microphone. We're recording in a new setup, uh, preparing for new things in radio in 2023. Mm -hmm. When I started this station, I thought it was a local radio station. It's not even close to a local radio station. Our listeners' main are all listenership, over the world. Yeah, yeah, are is the is uh, the UK, and the second in line now is Thailand. Oh, How does wow. that even make sense? Well, it's you know God. He does what he wants to it. do. Yes, around the world. So the radio station's name is Royalty for Real. Yes, radio, Royalty for Real Radio mm-hmm. for Women. Mm-hmm. Um, we are working on an app. Um, which is no real secret. I've been waiting on an app for years. Uh, but I wanted an app that was robust. And I wanted an app that you could download the app, listen to the radio station. You could get any of the outpouring writings that I write in real time. Because I know he gives them for now words. Right. You can um, know when the newspaper issue is just dropped. You know what I'm saying? So so everything is right there. You have your devotion. That's perfect. So I've been waiting on that. So we're working on that um, now. The podcast is now up and going. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll just keep doing those as he, until he says that's finished. Yeah. So share a little bit about love letters. Oh. I know that's a dear to your heart. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a little deal, but it's a big deal. No, um, it is a big deal. I think God has always made me to be a giver. Mm -hmm. Um, Early in music days, um, I had my friend found me uh, a feather necklace with little jewels in it, rhinestones. Cute. Um, I think we got them from Sam Moon. You know what I mean? (laughs) Uh, And they would buy. We would buy them in bulk. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, God anointed that little necklace. And every time we wore them, we knew to prepare to give them away. Mm-hmm. Uh, my album at the time was Under the Shadow of His Wings, mm-hmm. Psalm 91 4. He will cover you with his yeah. feathers. Under his wings, you'll find refuge. And he would send us into Cracker Barrels and Taco Bells and race tracks because we did NASCAR races. Mm-hmm. And he would just move on us to give our necklaces away and to mm-hmm. give the word with it. That was just the beginning of that. Yeah. And I people would buy them from me, and I would say, do not plan on keeping these for yourselves. He will never let you do it. Right. And they would always report back to me, you're right. <laughs> I now need another one because I just had to give it away. Right. And it just, it seemed so interesting mm-hmm. and fun to give. Yeah. And it's like the scripture that says, you know, um, it'll pour over into your lap. It's true. Yes. He, you can't outgive him. So 10 years ago, when we had the other ministry building for a year, I had love letters, and my desire was always to teach young girls how to give. And to a measure, that happened. Mm -hmm. But that ministry only lasted a year. God called me out of that ministry. Um, It was uh, a hard season after that. And I I guess I thought that was never going to happen. 10 years later, we get this building. Mm Mm-hmm. And now we have a whole love letter workshop, right. which I tell people is like it's likened to what the world knows as a Santa workshop. Mm-hmm. But it's full of books that I've written and others. It's full of um, scripture cards another friend has designed with the Lord. It's full of hearts that you make, mm-hmm. um, part of your gifting and creative gifting. And so... You know, we provide free bags full of music, full of books, through encouragement. Pam, our artist um, here, does um, these beautiful puzzle piece magnets and paints rocks. And (laughs) we provide them to hospice groups, grief share groups. You can see I have 25 sitting ready to go on the front desk if I find someone in pain. Mm-hmm. Someone can call me and say, would you do a love letter to someone? I don't expect money for it. Some people donate, you know, to help us with that. People yeah. donate bags. They donate crinkles, yes. you know, paper. Y'all donate your gifts. And it's been, it's, can I say it's my therapy? Yeah. Because 
you know, sometimes ministry is intense in our groups, and you know that. Oh, absolutely, yes. And I can come in here on a Wednesday or a Thursday and just sit in there, mm-hmm. pray over the bags, mm-hmm. um, sometimes design one specific for a specific need. Uh, you know, I was talking to a friend about it this week, saying it would be easy just to dump things in those bags. Uh, I have, you know, you've done it with me where you know we're very specific, right? Exactly, yes. Uh, yes, it's a ba- a beautiful white bag. It's got a love letter sticker on it. Um, your hearts are on the outside. I do that. It creates a, 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 a space of hospitality that loves on people. Yes. But I'll, as long as I have the resources in the room, I'll bag every CD separately mm-hmm. before it goes in. It takes a lot of time. Sure. Most people don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But I want them to open up something that shows somebody really thought this through. Right. And in something that the Lord is proud of. Right. It not only shows the Lord's love, but it also shows that somebody cares. Exactly. And yeah. And what a better way can you do than to just show love is with these you know I think it's been a big deal for me to give with no strings attached yeah. because I think if I were to um, indict the church a little bit not that I'm condemning anybody but I'm challenging is sometimes we have so many strings attached for people to come to Jesus yeah. that they just don't Right. Um, and I don't care if they never walk through my doors. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God shows me a street in the city, right? You've seen me do that. Yes. Like at Valentine's Day last year, he showed me a specific street when I was driving through, and I went and counted the houses, and I came and I made love letter bags, and I dropped them off on their front porch. (laughs) I think that's amazing. I don't know those people. Mm -hmm. They don't know me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they needed. I don't know if those went in the trash, and it's not my job to know. No. But you were I just had to obey. Yes. And it doesn't matter if they ever show up here. Yeah. I pray that the Holy Ghost arrested them and some people were saved right then on the spot. And that when I get to heaven, somebody's going to say, you know that bag? You dropped it on my front porch. Mm-hmm. You know? And I, and I think it's good that I don't know right now. Right. The encouragement that comes from those is just amazing. Especially, I think, my heart leans towards the hospice bags. Just yeah, because... Totally. I've been down that road when my dad passed away from Mm -hmm. cancer. And just to know that somebody cares and is thinking about you when you're going through whatever you're going through with your loved one or or a family member is just amazing to me. Oh, and, and the truth is, it is God making you understand that he sees you yes that's above all right because i'm sometimes i've included poems Mm -hmm. well i know how god writes poems with me so i know he's reading somebody's mail Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they're not gonna be able to run from that right and so even though it may look like shelly's the one blessing them and shelly's loving on them and that's true he's making a real big Mm -hmm. point that i'm I'm letting you know I see you. Right. So you it's know. it's back again to that whole full circle where it started with you yep. of having seeds planted. Yep. And you're planting seeds now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes I don't see what happened with those seeds. Mm-hmm. And we may never until we get on the other side. So, yeah. And, and you know, someone might come here new to a group or maybe they came in for some counseling or advice or whatever. And I may never see them again, but I make sure they leave with something. Right. Because it may not be anything I said that day, but something he put in that bag. Right. You know. Right. How exciting. I just, I can't wait to see what the Lord does next. It just never right. ceases to amaze me. <laughs> it, it never um, does. Yeah. It never does. He's faithful. That's the major, major thing that I would say. He really is. Yeah. Well, do you think we left anything out? I can't think of anything <laughs> right offhand. The only thing that I would like to say is that if a person is interested in helping with 
providing for love letter bags. Mm -hmm. How can they do that? Um, well, you're probably reminding me. Um, can I, I get on Amazon? That, yes, I actually do have an Amazon list. I don't even have I even told you that I knew that you did. I That's keep why I'm forgetting to you. share it. Yeah, <laughs> and it the the beautiful thing about the Amazon wish list is it lets me link to the things I use because I am pretty picky yes. about. Now, granted, people have donated things I've never used before, and it worked out beautifully. God just knows exactly, and so I, you know, I love that too. Um, but yeah, like right now, I'm out of. Um, I'm getting low on someone had given me two years ago all these they had gone into a dollar store it was Miss Pat and she had bought up all their leftover Valentine bags like oh, the little yeah. plastic bags uh -huh. and you know I use those oh, yeah. to wrap all kinds of things in because it's love letters well, yeah. so I'm low on all of that Okay. so if people can watch for Valentine's Day or Amazon has those so I have some of those things linked Okay. the white bags I use now I've found some silver bags that I really like. Mm -hmm. um, but even mailers, I use a lot of bubble mailers, so I have those on the wish list, and they're okay. really cheap. You know, so, so they're the, cheap ways to help. Okay, so you can, they, anybody that's listening can go to your website. Is it linked there? I'll get it linked. Okay. How's that? All right, good, <laughs> because that way people can hop on there and just see exactly what your needs are. They can, and, and you can go on and order a love letter for somebody and add their name cool. you can donate five dollars which it's because it's usually a shipping issue it'll help cover right. shipping exactly you can donate more if you want to or you don't have to donate at all yeah we you know the point was that i just never wanted money between a, us mm -hmm. and them and jesus right and does it cost us money to do ministry you know it does yes but he's always provided i've never had to worry about a thing right and so I just trust the Lord to move on people. Right. And he's been faithful to do that. That's oh why I gosh. was just saying earlier, you know, that he's just so faithful to do. And it, We've seen, I, I, can't, I have so many stories. It's, this building's full of them. Yes. Right? On, yes. He's an on-time God. Yeah. We hope today's episode has blessed you and encouraged you to pursue Christ passionately. To join us again for more encouragement, equipping, and empowering, subscribe to the 320 Podcast. We would also like to invite you to enjoy our round-the-clock radio station, Royalty for Real Radio for Women, at royaltyforreal.com. That's royalty, the number four, real.com.